Imagine Alice and Bob want to communicate. Alice sends a message, hello, to Bob. However, there's no encryption involved, so anyone who intercepts the message can read it directly. Bob receives the message, but since it was sent openly, an eavesdropper could also read it without any effort. Now let's revisit the scenario with RSA encryption. Bob generates a pair of keys, a public key and a private key. Alice encrypts her message M using Bob's public key and send it. When Bob receives the ciphertext C, he uses his private key to decrypt it, recovering the original message. In this case, even if someone intercepts the encrypted message C, they cannot decrypt it without Bob's private key. Messages can be represented numerically by converting each character to its binary ASCII equivalent. For example, in the message hello, each character can be written as an 8-bit binary. By concatenating these binaries, the entire message forms a large binary sequence that can be interpreted as a single integer, which can be converted into a large decimal number representing the entire message. Modular arithmetic is a system of arithmetic for integers, where numbers wrap around when reaching a certain value, called the modulus. For instance, there are only 12 hours on the face of a clock. If the time now is 7 o'clock, 10 hours later will be 5 o'clock, and we do not say 17 o'clock. The key is, we are only interested in the remainder when a value is divided by 12. When we say A is congruent to R modulo N, it means that A and R leave the same remainder when divided by N. The phrase modulo N in parentheses applies to the entire equation. This is different from saying A mod N without parentheses, which refers to the result of the modulo operation itself. A mod N without parentheses gives a unique integer R such that R is between 0 and N and R is congruent to A modulo N. The Euler's Tochint function, phi, is defined as the number of integers less than N that are co-prime with N. In other words, it is the number of integers M such that the greatest common divisor, GCD, of N and M is 1. If N is the product of K distinct prime numbers, the Euler's Tochin function of n is the product of each of these primes minus 1. Euler's theorem states that if m and n are co-prime, then m raised to the power of phi of n modulo n equals 1. The number 10 can be factored as the product of 2 and 5, where 2 and 5 are distinct primes. Phi of 10 equals 4, which means there are 4 integers less than 10 that are co-prime with 10. 1, 3, 7, and 9. The factorization problem is a core concept in cryptography. The problem is based on the fact that, given two large prime numbers p and q, it is easy to multiply them together to get their product n. However, given only n, it is extremely difficult to factor it back into its original primes p and q, especially when p and q are very large. Now, let's move to the RSA encryption algorithm. The first step is key generation. Select two large distinct prime numbers, p and q. Multiply P and Q to obtain N. N is used as the modulus. Calculate phi of N, which is P minus 1 times Q minus 1. Choose the public exponent E, coprime with phi of N. Compute the private exponent D, the modular multiplicative inverse of E modulo phi of N, and it can be computed using the extended Euclidean algorithm, and it verifies the equation E times D equals K times a phi of n, plus 1. The public key is the pair n and e. This key is shared publicly and used for encryption. The private key is d. This key is kept secret and used for decryption. Now let's move to the encryption step. First, we need to convert our message hello 
into an integer m. Then, we use the public key n and e to encrypt the integer m. The ciphertext c is equal to m raised to the power of e modulo n. Now, let's move to the decryption process. First, we use the private key d to decrypt the ciphertext c to recover the message m. The message m is equal to c raised to the power of d modulo n. Since c equals m raised to the power of e modulo n from the encryption step, substituting this into the decryption equation, we get c raised to the power of d modulo n equals m raised to the power of e times d modulo n, and we have e times d is equal to k times p of n plus 1. Then we use Euler's theorem to simplify the equation to m. Now, let's move to an example of RSA encryption in action. Alice wants to send the message hello to Bob. She first converts it into an integer m. Then, she uses Bob's public key n and e to calculate the ciphertext c, where c equals m raised to the power of e modulo n. After that, she sends the ciphertext to Bob. Bob receives the ciphertext and uses his private key D to decrypt it, where M equals C raised to the power of D modulo N. If Eve intercepts the message, she cannot decrypt it because she doesn't have Bob's private key.